Oh my God, I am so grateful to be able to introduce to some and present to others Stephen D. Smallwood. This young man said yes. I asked, can I chat with you? Y'all, this is my little big cousin, Stephen Smallwood, Stevie. So y'all enjoy our conversation. This was uh, a B12 from my heart. Oh my God. All right, ma'am. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I have an honored guest. And this so happens to be somebody that my daddy threatened to hurt me if I continued to fight on his behalf. This is my little big cousin that I'm honored to introduce you to. Stevie, he'll give his full God-given name. But it was like, oh, and my little cousin, now he's a big old grown man. And I remember Callaway saying, if I catch you fighting for him again, and I won't say the words because we didn't always use Christian language all the time. So, but anywho, Stevie, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself. And the first thing that makes me so excited is to hear a memory of a heart smile. Because we be cheesing, you're an entrepreneur, you be cheesing, I be cheesing, but the inside ain't always smiling. So it could be a recent heart smile or one way back. So if you share your name or anything else you want to share about yourself, as uh, well as a heart smile. All right. Oh, uh, well, Stephen D. Smallwood, uh, I guess I'd be, let me see, number four, let me see, Donna. Mark, Doogie, Vicky, Charlene, Ricky, I guess number six, seven in line uh, in, in the DNA strand. Uh, but the heart smile, and based on what you just said, the one that comes to immediate mind, because you used to take up, I used to, used to run all the time uh, before God taught me how to defend myself. Uh, the one that comes to mind was running home one day from somebody chasing me. And Grandma Calloway, I got to the door and she locked the door. She said, she said you can't come in here, turn around, take that A whooping or give her A whooping, but you're not coming in here. You got to learn how to fight. <laughs> and that's the first thing that came to mind. And uh, after that, that's the way it was. You know, I always said, uh, Uncle Charles, <laughs> Uncle C always told me, you know, well, if you just fight back, they won't want no more the next time whether you win or lose. <laughs> so yeah, and he used to get on all y'all, uh, you and Vicky, Mark, for, for taking up on me. And then, <laughs> until I flipped the script and then he used to get on me for being, for being so bad. <laughs> but that's what Those, comes to mind. Our heart smiles, man. Cause yeah. uh, grandma didn't play. No, no, mm -mm. no, she did No, she mm -mm. didn't. Mm -mm. I have to, uh, when I was growing up, Stevie, not that well, this is our party. I used to want to grow up and be able to curse real fluid and make right. up words. Cause she could put some words together that, yeah. like, where'd she get that from? Yeah, yeah she was a, she was a handful. <laughs> that's for sure. Yes, she was. Okay. My next question, uh, handsome is if you could tell your 16 year old self, some sound advice or a young black male, some sound advice that, you know, in the early teens or mid teens, based on where you are now, what would you tell that black male? Uh, never follow, never lead, just be yourself. The biggest problem I think nowadays is uh, peer pressure from young people wanting to be what they see in videos or what they friends might tell them they should do or shouldn't do uh, a certain way to act. Uh, I was blessed, we were blessed to always have positive role models. Uh, the only reason why I survived my <laughs> adolescent thuggishness was the prayers of my mother and grandmother and the uh, the leadership, the example that my uncles, Uncle Charles, Uncle Hart, I mean, everybody got up and went to work. Everybody was diligent in what they did and consistent in what they did. And I saw that. I mean, not just me. We all saw that every day. I mean, our, our whole lives. Uh, and the only thing that was leading me astray was 
the Negroes out in the street and trying to trying to be with the crowd. And I tell tell my 16 year old self, you don't have to follow anybody. You can lead. You don't have to lead anybody. You just be yourself. And that's uh, what comes to mind. That's, that's deep. I've never heard that before. Given permission to be yourself, that you yeah. don't. That's that's powerful, Stevie. I ain't lying. That now that's even for our age. Yeah, it, you just you know you don't have to try to be like anybody else. Yeah, man. Everybody wants to be you know wants to be accepted, which is good. I mean, everybody wants to be accepted in a group, so forth. But I you know once I learned that lesson, being the, you know I I'm just I ended up not being a good follower you know, because you can get led in the wrong direction. So uh, the only thing I wanted to follow was the example that Alice L gave me. All right. And, you know, that's what I tried to stick to. That leads me to my next question. You had Uncle Jimmy and Alice strong parents and mm -hmm. they were their own people. A dynamite, I remember them growing up. I was little, but I remember Uncle Jimmy being strong. Of course, they now, you know. But looking at both your parents, can you see something in you that was specific that you saw in them, an attribute that you could see that uh, you're carrying on out of either one of them? Well, yeah, I mean. The biggest influence was my mother, you know, mm -hmm. Alice Smallwood. That, uh, and the only reason for any limited success I may have had was trying to emulate her because it was just the right, I, I just saw how rewarding it was for her personally to be able to achieve certain things uh, and stand above the crowd. And uh, that was just my, my leading example. I, I, can't, I can't express it any stronger. Uh, if I could be more like her, I'd be a better person even today. Uh, what I get from my father is, <laughs> is the fight, uh, which, is, which is good to have. Uh, and as well as my uncles, you know, I mean, your, your daddy, Uncle Charles and Uncle Hart, I mean, it, you got to fight to be a good person. I mean, you literally have to fight to be a good person. You, it, just, it doesn't come easily. You have to want to do it. And simply wanting to do it is not enough. You have to fight for it to, to live a life that you can be proud of because there's a whole lot of uh, things that's gonna pull you in different directions and you have to stay strong. So I get that from, I get that mama was strong too, but daddy was a fighter. Uh, and you know that for yourself. <laughs> James Smallwood was a fighter. So I think I get that from him too. Yeah, I remember hearing stories about something went down with Ain't Donna and he went and handled the situation. And I'm like, oh, whoa, yeah. oh, whoa, whoa. There's several yeah. stories like that. Yeah, something went Ooh. down with Vicky and, you know, and sometimes he would hot tail it in from Atlanta just to do what he needed to do. Uh, but, but the other side of that coin is there's other stories where, you know, Uncle Charles and Uncle Horace wasn't going for it. <laughs> so, you know, but that's, yeah. that's the fight in it. That's the fight, I mean, you have to stand up for what you believe. Yeah. Now this, I just, it hit me. Being in, I'm gonna let you go. I ain't gonna keep you for real. I just have to, okay. Uh, being from a uh, granddaddy lineage mm -hmm. and being, you know, church set up right. front. What was one of the difficult parts are <laughs> challenging or was it challenging to live up to granddaddy and Aunt Alice and them people that was, you know, out there on the wall, spiritual. Yeah, I mean, being what they call PK, and even though, uh, you know, as you know, Charlie, you know, granddaddy and grandma, grandma, Reverend Calloway and Mary Calloway, we live, all live together uh, in the same house. So daddy, we call him daddy. You know, granddaddy was daddy. And uh, with him being the pastor of cable, uh, which is, you know, like a, a hierarchy position, everybody in the church felt that they were obligated to be pseudo parents to me. So you couldn't really get away with anything. And punishment for me at church, if I did something, which I was always doing something wrong, I'd have to ride home with granddad. Uh, and that was not fun because he was upset that I had to ride with him. He was upset that I had did something where I had to ride with him. So I had to get preached at, you know, and, and granddaddy, he, he could discipline you in his own way. 
Uh, he didn't, he wasn't a whole lot of words. He didn't say a whole lot of words at the time. I mean, he'd get up there in the pulpit and, and talk to God and talk to the, to the congregation, but at home, he didn't say a whole lot. And when he did, you knew, you knew he meant what he was saying. Uh, the other side of the coin, you know, part of that punishment, I had to sit up in the choir with mama, uh, and you're looking out at the, at the congregation. That was, you know, it's embarrassing because they know why you're up there because <laughs> you did something wrong. <laughs> But uh, all that, all that is in, was in a teaching mode. Yes. And I look back grateful for it now. I mean, they talk about child abuse now. You know, we used to get spankings and not just spankings, whoopings. I got, she spanked me life. one time. Grandma smacked oh, yeah. me. And, well, <laughs> grandma will smack you, yeah, <laughs> upside your head. <laughs> but thank the Lord, looking back on it, that's what saved me. Because without discipline, you have no guidance. I mean, it's, it's one thing to just tell somebody something, but there's ramifications for actions. And you learn that at a young age. And when you get older, you know, well, if I do this, this is going to happen. So I, I shouldn't do that. <laughs> so, yeah, those are teaching tools that I, that I carry to this day. Hey, man, I'm not, I got more questions, but I'm going to hit you with one because I know you have an appointment coming up. But this last question knowing where we came from and you said you had a praying mama i know praying grandma mm -hmm. but one only one attribute right now of the lord that if you could highlight it based on where you're at right now in your life you know his goodness his mercy whatever that one thing about the lord that you would tell people and why that one thing is so important one attribute about god faith got to have faith. I mean, uh, it's more than belief. You got to have faith. And if you love the Lord, then love the Lord and have faith in him that he will bring you through. I've, as you know, I've had some challenging times in my life. And if it were not for the Lord's blessings upon me, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you now. So when all else fails, I lean on my faith. Hey, Amen. Boy, that's deep. That's rich because he's faithful. Always. Yeah, he just, always. Boy. Honey, I would love to chit chat again. I just had an idea because we have entrepreneurship in our family. So right. let's chat. But I'm a uh, woman. Okay. Yeah. Focus. Well, go I'm ahead. You can go ahead. But I'm going to get us off of a recording so I can share what I just came to my mind. So this okay. is my, because, you know, we've always been able to play by ourselves or play with one. So I'm saying Cha Cha from Cha Cha and my big little cousin. Stevie Smallwood. Woo -hoo. Later, y'all. God bless. <laughs>